Now, a Target 12 investigator's exclusive grave concerns. It's been years since we've been inside the condemned Roger Williams Park mausoleum, and the situation has only gotten worse. It has to be addressed the sooner the better. Tonight, we're returning to that eerie site in Cranston where hundreds of bodies remain trapped inside a crumbling building. And we're hearing from a local funeral director who has a new plan to remove all of the remains once and for all. Target 12 investigator Susan Campbell joins us now with the exclusive new details she's uncovered. It's almost hard to see the mausoleum because the trees and plants are so overgrown. But behind the brush, the building is crumbling. The situation here has gotten so bad, it's landed on the desk of Rhode Island's top lawmaker. Open caskets, crumbling stone, dripping water. It wasn't like this just 20 years ago. Times change. Greg Mierka is the chair of the Cranston Historical Cemeteries Commission. The bodies in the, in the building are probably going to have to be moved to another site, and the building's probably going to have to be demolished. It's a sad uh, uh, ending. When the owners died in the early 2000s, they didn't leave money to care for it. The property's receiver argued the state and city should be responsible for it, but neither wanted to claim it. And ultimately, the judge ordered the mausoleum abandoned. It's like kicking the can down the road, and eventually uh, major portions of the building are going to start falling in. Over the years, there have been efforts to try to remove the bodies. We were there in 2014 when Claire Berkovitz's father's remains were rescued from the condemned building. But soon after, the property was forgotten again by everyone but trespassers who've opened caskets and stolen from the dead. It's desecration of human remains. Annette Baraducci's family owns two funeral homes in Rhode Island. She says they have a new plan to get the bodies out. What would it take to get the remains that are inside this mausoleum out? It would take the cooperation of the state, the cooperation of the city. What do you need? What do you need from the state and the city? Some engineers, some laborers, some funds. And we can get started immediately. It wouldn't take very long. It's unclear exactly how many bodies remain inside, but court documents say 527 people were laid to rest there. According to previous estimates, it cost about $6,000 to disinter and reinter a single body, which means the total cost could soar past $3 million. Not millions of dollars not millions of dollars. Baraducci was reluctant to put a price tag on the project. She suggested the state could tap into its general public assistance burial fund. It's money used to cover burials for indigent Rhode Islanders. Payments are capped at $900 per body. These are unclaimed bodies like the rest of the unclaimed bodies. We checked with the Department of Human Services and learned the burial fund pays out about $600,000 each year. I think it's important as a society as people to show each other that when we leave this earth that we're not left here exposed like this. Earlier this month, Berducci met with House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello to discuss her plan. Mattiello's spokesperson tells me the speaker promised to research the issue and also told us as a Cranston representative, the speaker wants to help. With the Target 12 investigator, Susan Campbell, Eyewitness News. Now to a Target 12 investigator's exclusive grave concerns. At 5, we told you about a local funeral home's new plan to remove hundreds of bodies that are trapped inside the condemned Roger Williams Park Mausoleum. And new at 6, what we've learned about the people who were laid to rest there and why the complete list may be lost forever. Target 12 consumer investigator Susan Campbell's in Cranston with the story. We found a list of people interred here, but we know that list only represents about half of the people who were laid to rest in this building. Right next door to the condemned Roger Williams mausoleum, Christine DeMarco found her home sweet home. To be perfectly honest with you, I bought my house because of the mausoleum. I felt a real draw and obligation to do something with it. But the vision faded as the building crumbled. When they put up the fence, uh, I realized that my dreams of somehow rescuing this building had to be put aside. 
but it's never stopped my interest in this building. Annette Baraducci and her family have also been interested in this building for years. They operate two funeral homes in the area, and right before the building was declared abandoned by the court, the Baraducci's proposed a plan to disinter and reinter all of the bodies. A lot of these people were veterans, they're war heroes, they took care of us, we have to take care of them. The plan fizzled because there was no funding, and the building, deemed a health and safety hazard, has gotten worse. Five to seven years ago, we didn't have the caskets on the ground like that. So the Baraducci's are trying to secure funding again and have met with House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello to discuss the issue. It has to be addressed and the sooner the better. But there's still some mystery surrounding who was laid to rest here. According to court records, there were 527 bodies in the mausoleum. The Cranston Historical Cemeteries Commission provided us with a list of 278 names on it, acknowledging it's not even close to a complete list. While we were inside, we noticed this crypt, Irma Dunn, who lived from 1908 to 1998. Her name is one of the names not included on the list of people interred here. And we may never get a complete list. When the judge declared the mausoleum abandoned, he issued an order to destroy the building's remaining books and records. The judge, the attorneys, nobody really came to a, a conclusion as to what to do. There's a lot of people that have a lot of ideas. The problem is, is who's going to take it on to decide, make those decisions? At this point, no one knows the answer to that question. A spokesperson for the House Speaker said Mattiello has promised to research the issue and added, as a Cranston representative, the Speaker wants to help. We also reached out to Cranston Mayor Alan Fung. His spokesperson said the city has not seen a complete plan from the Baranucci family. With the Target 12 investigator Susan Campbell, Eyewitness News.